Welcome to the eighth tutorial on the Vembu. Today we will cover station and receiver maintenance and receiver attachments. Go ahead and open up your copy of the Vembu. What is maintenance? Perhaps you think a receiver is not performing as well as it could and you want to send it to Vemco, or you just want to flag it for additional testing. Perhaps you sent it to Vemco and had the hydrophone changed. Those are all types of receiver maintenance. And the same thing goes with stations. Perhaps you need to change the bolts if a base becomes buried and it needs to be unburied. Those are all types of maintenance. Those are also all important pieces of information that can easily get lost after years of downloads. So we're going to start with receiver maintenance. Go ahead on up to and select the Update Receiver Status tab. If a receiver is broken or possibly broken, you want to take it out of, ro uh, out of rotation. So we're going to go ahead and start with changing the status of the receiver. So let's go ahead and do this with the 2222. I'm going to change the status to broken. Since it is not being permanently removed at this point in time, we don't need to fill in a date removed from service. Once we've changed the status to broken, we want to add some details to that. So go ahead and select Receiver Maintenance. In this part of the Bamboo, it's designed like an auto shop. You submit a maintenance request and then update it when it's completed. This main page shows open maintenance requests. So we want to add a new maintenance request. So we're going to go ahead and select New Maintenance. A new pop-up window appears. In the first drop-down, select the receiver. Only receivers listed as broken appear in this list. So if you don't see the receiver that you want to add a maintenance request on, you need to go back and change the status to broken first. Go ahead and select 222. And you're going to fill out the form like normal. What date you're submitting the request. And then a description. By default, it's going to have fixed a set as no. When we're done, you can go ahead and click save. Now this is an automatic update thing, but you can go ahead if you don't see it appear, go ahead and hit your refresh button. And now we see the open maintenance request. We often wait until we have a batch of receivers that we're going to send back to Bemco. So let's pretend it's been a while and you want to see what receivers you have that are technically listed as broken. You could look here, but we could also go to the queries and under outstanding maintenance needs and look at maintenance needed receivers. And here would be a list of all the open maintenance requests. All right, let's go ahead and close the query and go on back to our receiver maintenance list. So time passes and let's say the receiver gets fixed. Now we want to update that maintenance request. So go ahead and select the hyperlink open next to the one that you want to update. It brings up the record and now you can finish filling it out. So now we can change fix to yes, the date that it was fixed, and we can put in a description. On a side note, I find this information really interesting to keep track of because you can see at what point, you know, how many receivers have had the hydrophones changed, at what age, what was going on with them. So it keeps a nice record. And once we're done, we can click save. See how the maintenance request disappeared from here? That's because it's no longer an open maintenance request. We can head over to our queries and check it out a different way. Again, if we went to maintenance needed receivers, it's gone from here because it's no longer in need. Go ahead and close that query. But if you're interested in the history of everything that's put down on your receivers, we can go down here to histories, receiver maintenance history, and this will just be a long list of every receiver and what's been the maintenance requests that have been opened and closed. All right, so that's it for receiver maintenance. Let's move on to station maintenance. Go ahead and 
We can, if you want to, you can close your receiver maintenance list here, or you can leave it open, whatever you want to do. We're going to go to up st update station status. There are two buttons, one for maintenance and one for attachments. They're closely related, but different. We will go over attachments next, but you click this button when you want to change something about the attachment, not just the bolts, but something that might impact where the receiver is in the water or how it is physically attached. For example, you change from an auger to a float. The maintenance button is for anything that needs to be done to a station that does not change the overall attachment. For instance, you saw that your base was getting buried and should be unburied next time you dive that, that station, or the bolts were getting thin and should be changed soon. So we're going to select the maintenance, station maintenance. Just like in receiver maintenance, this will show a list of open station maintenance requests. Go ahead and select new maintenance. A pop-up window appears. In the first drop-down, you can select station. Only active stations are available for station maintenance. You can imagine if a station is retired, you don't need to do any maintenance on it. So let's just pick one. We can set the, priori the priority level. We'll say, ah, oh, it's pretty, we'll say it's a normal priority. The default status is not started, but you can change this um, according to whatever suits you. But I'm just going to leave it as not started. And I'm going to add the start date, so that's essentially the day that I'm putting in the request. And you can even add a picture if you like. I think I have one handy. The pictures may be useful. A lot of us dive with cameras if you want to add an image of, say, your buried base or anything like that. So I'll show you how easy it is to do. I'm going to go ahead and click the Add or Remove Attachments. Add. Navigate to the photo. And click OK. So in this instant, this probably is not a normal priority. This probably would have been pretty high and it would have eventually have come out with the changing attachments. But anyway, it's just an example of a photo. And we can write in a description as well. And when we're done, we can go ahead and click Save and Close. So again, like with receiver maintenance, this has automatically showed up here as an open maintenance station request. Let's go over and check out the queries. So I can go with maintenance, outstanding ma maintenance needs. Let me look at the spelling there. Go ahead and select that. And we see an open maintenance request. Go ahead and close it. We can also go ahead and look at our field data sheet. Go ahead and select the field data sheet query. And we've looked at this a few times now um, that has some interesting, useful information that is automatically updated. But the last portion of this is it will automatically also assign any maintenance needed to that station. So we said that at station A, this is the open maintenance request that's there. So when you go out in the field, you already know to what stations you have an open maintenance request. All right, let's go ahead and close the loop and let's close this query and go back to station maintenance. And now we're going to say that it's been completed. So just like before, we click the hyperlink next to the record and we can change the status from not started to completed when it was completed. And we can add any other notes here. Obviously, that's a silly solution, but that'll work. So we go ahead and click Save and Close. And here we see that the open maintenance request has disappeared because it's no longer open. But if we go back to Queries and we look at the history, there we go, Station Maintenance History, that this would be a list, an ongoing list. So that is it for putting in maintenance requests. Now let's go over changing attachment types. 
go back to our, we can go ahead, you can close your station maintenance list here, or you can just re-navigate. We're going to update station status, and now we're going to select station attachments. You can imagine a situation you originally deployed a system like a center block rope and float because you thought it was a low flow area. Turns out that sucker was walking all over the place. She replaced it with a sand auger. Now your detection efficiency might be a little different between using the center block and rope and float and your sand auger. That's all just in interesting information that you want to be able to keep track of. So we're going to go ahead and select. We're going to pretend that we are changing one of these attachment methods and we're going to select new attachment. Sorry, I do want to back up for one second and show this is a list of all attachments at a station. There is no request and there is no request and then fulfill request for this. So this would just be a long list and could have multiple entries for a single station of all the attachment methods. All right, so we are going to go ahead and select new attachment again. And a new pop-up form appears. The first drop down is station. Only active stations are available to be selected. Even if you see them in this larger list, you're only going to change it on an active station. So we'll go ahead and change the attachment. Select the date that we're changing. Now I do need to fill out this form in, the in, in its entirety. So we're going to change this to say a trawl resistant float. I need to put in the bottom depth, riser length, instrument de depth, and station description. If I leave any of this blank, it's going to change the metadata for the station. What I would suggest is if you're, you're changing your attachment, but it doesn't like super impact your, I mean, it's obviously not going to change your, your depth at the site, but if your riser length and instrument depth are the same, you can kind of peer out here and say, okay, even, even though I changed from auger and ties, I'm going to just use this information. Okay, I've filled out the entire form, and now I'm going to click Save, and then Close. Again, we can go up here and hit the Refresh. And we see that this has been updated. I realized that a couple moments before I told you this would be a long list. I'm sorry, I confused that with the history that we'll look at next. Um, so this list will be should just be the most updated, the last attachment method there. If I get a chance, I will go back and redo this video. If not, sorry for the mistake, and I'm, I'm sure you can, you can catch up. So to check on how our queries have changed, we can go ahead on over here to queries, and we can look at, let's, first let's look at the history, so station attachment history. And here we do see two entries for station A, and we see the date that it was changed. This is interesting to if you ever want to know how many different types of attachments have I used at this station? How many times have I started with one type of attachment and then changed to a different type of attachment? All interesting things that can happen over the years. All right, we can go ahead and, and close our attachments history. And let's look at how about um, Let's go ahead and look at essentially the current uh, attachment. So if we go to active stations, we have all of our stations, and here we can see that the attachment method is has been automatically updated. Go ahead and close that query. And again, we happen to pick a station that we have a receiver deployed at to change the attachment. So if we go to field data sheet, we can see that the attachment method has been automatically updated. Go ahead and close. All right, that is it for today. Um, t uh, next time we'll be covering how to move a station. Um, I wish you luck, and again, let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.